Hello, Hello everyone, everyone. we're, we're Moss Charmley. Today we're going to show you how to use the 8 Do Micro as a digital artist using the program Krita. We're not sponsored. We hope this helps you out if you choose to use a device like this. Or if you want to stick to the keyboard, that's cool too. This is a device we personally like to use to do digital art. This device works as a one-handed keyboard for your shortcut keys. It can improve your workflow and speed things up a bit. <laughs> not to say using a keyboard can be slow, this is just different. It's a little bit more flexible and gives you some freedom of movement. It helps you change your posture as well yeah. while you're actually creating art. So We're going to walk you through the steps so you can use it too. If you're left or right handed, the orientation of the gamepad slash keyboard will be different. It will be flipped depending upon which hand you're holding it in. The key that we made for the programs will show both left and right hand orientation. So, what does it do and what it, what is it, right? Yeah, I mean, what is this? big question. <laughs> <laughs> the 8 Do Micro is a gamepad that takes the place of your keyboard after you've customized it with the Ultimate software. It has 16 programmable buttons that are customizable to your workflow. It works with the Switch, it works on Android, it works on a Raspberry Pi. It can connect using Bluetooth or wired USB-C. It has a 180 milliamp battery that is rechargeable. It has 12 hours of playtime and it can recharge in about one to two hours, which is really, really good. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Let's get started. Mm -hmm. First thing to do is to install the ultimate software on your mobile device. It is easier when it is on your phone. So go to your app store of choice and it's called Ultimate Software. Once that's done, the app asks you to pair your 8BitDo Micro to your phone. It is going to need to control the Bluetooth. That's how it programs the gamepad. Once that's done, you can go into the software and you can create profiles. We created some profiles with our own hotkey preferences. You don't have to feel obligated to use the same ones. We just thought if you want to give this a, a go, you can, it allows you to start on how to set this up for yourself. Um, so feel free to find the hotkeys that may work better for you. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to start making profiles. Inside the ultimate software, if you go up to the top left and select profile, then press the large band at the top with a little plus in the middle. This will create a new profile. And then if you go and press the pencil on the right of the profile, you can edit the name of the profile. Let's rename the profile Krita because that's what we're doing. <laughs> on each program, you can find the keyboard shortcuts. And we're in Krita, so we're gonna find those keyboard shortcuts in Krita. Mm -hmm. So in Krita, you press Krita on the top left of your window, then go to preferences. Then you will see a new window pop up and on the left hand side you will see a column and the second thing in that column will be keyboard shortcuts. Press that. Mm -hmm. Now you're in the place to look for the keyboard shortcuts. Krita makes this easy because you can use the search bar on the top to find exactly what you're looking for. Super convenient. Very. It makes Krita really wonderful. Mm -hmm. Krita has specific terms for their tools. So to find what you're looking for, you're going to need to know the name of the tool specifically and what it does. It is very intuitive. So if you kind of know what you're looking for, you will most likely find it. So tools like Flip Canvas on another program could be Mirror, mm -hmm. which they are in Krita. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Windows and Linux share the same shortcut keys for Krita, but the shortcut keys for Mac are slightly different. To create a uniform shortcut keys, depends upon your OS. For example, we go from Mac to Linux, so we chose to change the Mac shortcut keys to make both operating systems the same for Krita. You don't have to worry about this if you only use a single OS or computer. Let's start by connecting your 8 Micro to your computer. Mm. You have to go into your Bluetooth settings there are two things you have to do with the 8 Do Micro while your Bluetooth settings window is open. First thing is to make sure your 8 Do Micro is on keyboard mode. 
It's the switch on the bottom that you flip all the way to the right, to the letter K. Then there's a small button next to that switch you need to press. This button puts it in pairing mode. After you've done both, you should see it uh, 8 bit do micro gamepad. Then press connect. It is paired and in keyboard mode. Success! <laughs> <laughs> now it's time to do a walkthrough of programming the shortcuts in the computer. First, we're going to program Krita with the shortcuts we currently use. Feel free to follow along. All the shortcuts can be found in the Configure Krita menu on Mac OS. It is in Preferences, which is right below the Krita menu dropdown. On Windows and Linux, it is in Settings on the taskbar, and it is the first option called Configure Krita. Now that we're in the Configure Krita menu, we just wanted to explain that to create a uniform shortcut profile for Linux, Mac, and Windows, we're going to have to create alternatives for some shortcuts. But the majority of Krita's shortcuts will remain the same. Don't worry, this isn't going to mess up the pre-installed shortcuts Krita has created for you. This just creates an addition to what already exists in shortcuts. The shortcuts we chose are the ones we use the most. And if you are wondering what they are, they are rotate the canvas to the left and rotate it to the right. You're going to be able to increase the brush size and decrease the brush size. You'll be able to undo and redo. You'll have access to the eraser. You'll be able to add a paint layer and alter the opacity of your brush, as well as mirror your image and move or pan your image. We hope these will help you out as much as they help us out. In the Krita configuration menu, you're going to want to make sure you're on keyboard shortcuts. And in the search bar at the top, we're going to type the word zoom in. And you're going to see zoom in, zoom out, and zoom to 100. But we're going to change our zoom, our zoom in and zoom out. We go over to the little arrow to the right of the pre-configure shortcut key and we will pull it down to reveal something that will say default, none, custom. Tick the box that is next to custom. Then in the blank square next to that, we're going to input our keyboard shortcut on our computer. We're going to press control and the plus symbol, which will end up being control equals, and that's what we want. Now we're going to go down to zoom out and change the shortcut there. Select custom after the drop-down menu window has come down and we're going to input control shift and minus. We've found that doing these two alterations make Krita a little bit more stable with the zoom in and zoom out for some reason. It was a little buggy and inconsistent, so to fix that we just created these custom shortcuts. Okay, we're going to move on. So we're going to go into configure Krita menu. The next shortcuts that we're going to have to customize or create an alternative to is going to be undo. So let's type in the search query for undo. Now we're going to see undo with the little arrow icon. There's going to be a standard for the computer operating system you're using, but we're going to change that for uniformity's sake. So we select a little arrow past the one that's already there. We have the drop down menu come down. We select custom and inside that blank, we're going to put control Z. Okay. Next one, we're, next one we're going to do is going to be redo. So in the search bar, you type in the word redo, and you're going you're going to have the word redo come up with the little arrow pointing towards the future, I guess. <laughs> and you're going to go to that drop down menu, which is right beyond the predetermined shortcut. Select custom and go to that input square, and we're going to input Control Shift Z. Perfect. Now the next one we're going to do is adding a paint layer. In the search bar at the top, type add paint layer. And we're going to select the little arrow to reveal the drop down menu. We're going to select custom and in the input window, in, in the input window there, we're going to input control P. Okay, moving on to the next one, we've found that eraser is E on 
is the letter E on all platforms, but for some reason we found it to be a little, a little funky and changing it to an alternative fixed it. Strangely, it worked. <laughs> so back up to the search bar and put in the word erase. So it's going to say, to say set eraser mode. That's the one we're going, that's the one we're looking for. Uh, so going to select that little arrow, it's right past the letter E, select custom in the drop down menu and move over to that little input box and we're going to hold down control and E. All of this actually looks to be everything we're going to need to change. And don't forget to press OK at the far bottom right of the Configure Krita menu to make sure all of the settings are saved. That's very important. <laughs> you can close that menu and restarting Krita would be a good idea now. So on the ultimate software, on your mobile device, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to configure the ultimate software. Uh, this configuration is for people who hold the controller in their left hand and draw with their right. So this is for all you right-handed users out there. <clears throat> now, let's open the ultimate software on your phone. Make sure your micro is on and your Bluetooth is on as well. You will be instructed to click the little heart on the micro to sync everything together and completely access the micro to reprogram it. At the top left of the app, press Profile and make sure that the Krita profile is in blue or selected. Once you have done that, press Buttons, which is the second option on the left. This is where we're going to input all the shortcuts to work for the micro. We're going to start on the left with L2, which is the number 4. This rotates the canvas to the left. The next is going to be L which is space, which pans the canvas and or moves it around. The next is going to be minus. We're going to input control and equals, which is zoom in. Now it's the arrow up, which is going to be the letter B for your free hand tool. Now, the arrow to the left is going to be the right bracket, which increases the brush size. The next is going to be the arrow to the left, which is going to be the left bracket. That decreases the brush size. Now to the arrow pointing down, we're going to put in control and Z, which undoes your action. So that's undo, basically. <laughs> That was an alternative we created. So the next one is going to be the star. That is going to be the letter O that increases your brush opacity. Now we're going to move on to the right side, starting with R2. <laughs> that is going to be the number six, which rotates your canvas to the right. The next one is going to be R and that's going to be the letter M. And that's to mirror or flip that, co that canvas horizontally, back and forth, if you'd like. The next one is going to be plus. We're going to input control, shift, and minus. That is going to zoom out. So the next one is X, which is going to be the letter P. And that's for the color selector tool on your canvas. The next one is going to be A, which is going to be inputted on Control and P, and that adds a paint layer. That's an alternative we created specifically. The next one is going to be the letter Y on your controller, and we're going to customize that and give it a Control E, and that is the eraser mode. The next one is going to be B on your controller and we are going to have control shift and Z as its custom which is the redo button which is good finally this is going to be the heart on the micro and that is going to be the letter I which decreases the brush opacity now we're going to do a walkthrough for left-handed users so those who 
draw with their left hand and hold the micro with their right. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> we'll start with the left column first. So the L2 button will be the number six, which rotates the canvas to the right. Uh, the L button will be the letter M, which will be mirror view, which you know, flips canvas horizontally. Um, minus will be control shift minus, <laughs> which is zoom out. The up button, the up arrow <laughs> is control shift Z, which is redo. The arrow to the left is control P, which adds a paint layer. The arrow to the right is control E, which is erase mode. The arrow pointing down is the letter P, which is color selection tool. The star is the letter I, which is decrease brush opacity. Now on the right column, uh, we have R2, which is the number four, which rotates canvas to the left. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, then we have um, R, which is space, which is the, uses the pan tool, which moves the canvas around. The next one is plus, which you'll be uh, doing control equals, and that's zoom in. The next one is X, and that is control Z, and that's undo action. The next one is A which is the right bracket, which increases the brush size. Then there's Y, which is the left bracket, which decreases the brush size. Then you will have B, which is the letter B as well, <laughs> which is the freehand brush tool. Then the last one will be the heart, which will be O, which is increase, increase brush opacity. <laughs> Yes. Don't forget to, yeah, we got through it. We did it. Yeah. <laughs> Don't forget to press sync to device after you've completed all your inputs. Yes, very important. Very important, because all that work <laughs> yes. might not happen, yeah. and, and then you got to redo it. That's, yeah. To do that, that saves all of the keys you, mm -hmm. you've typed in. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, there we go. Uh, we hope that this helps you out getting accustomed to using the micro as a shortcut key alternative. Yeah. It's a very capable device that we really, really do enjoy using all the time, like every day. Basically. Yeah, it's pretty daily yeah. advice, it's, it's really daily device. It's taking place, it's <laughs> really great. Um, we're going to leave a PDF of this configuration on Gumroad for free, and we will leave it up at the end of the video for a while, so you can take a screenshot or just see, you know, the key for what we used and how we programmed it, so. Um, we just really want to thank everybody for getting this far in the tutorial, even. I mean, yeah, for lasting this long. Lasting thank you. Long, right? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for your patience. Yeah, so, um, yeah. And we just wanted to say thank you. And we hope everybody is having a great day. And uh, thank you again. Thank really. you. Yeah. So, Moss Charlie, Moss Charlie out. out. Right? Okay.